Hi, this is Chris with Stupid Raisins, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to change the color of the background in Final Cut Pro 10. Now you can go plain and use like a red, blue, or green, or let's go wild and get some leopard print. Now I'm gonna share with you ways to use generators to create different types of backgrounds. And not just static backgrounds, but ones with motion that kind of give a little bit of texture to your video. I'm also gonna show you a way to pull the color of an object out and replace it with a different color to match the style and mood of your project. Let's go check it out. We're gonna take a look at the preferences and the player background. So we're gonna go in here to playback, player background. I have it set to white right now. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So if we take this and scale it, we're gonna see that white background up here. So basically everything back there is going to be just blank. In the player, it's gonna show white. Um, but when you output it, when you export it, it's gonna be blank. You can also set it to checkerboard or black. All right, so from there, let's check out some generators. We're gonna to go to the browser. Uh, you can find different things in here, like one is a beam that you can adjust. Lots of different options there. Another one we can throw in is some clouds. And these are pretty cool. You can change uh, how much you want that dolly to move, where you want things to track, the number of clouds you want to see in there. And as you play that back, you'll just see that. You can also throw in a curtain that's just slightly moving. You can change the color of that curtain. You can also bring down these blobs, which basically is like a lava lamp effect. You can change the different colors that you see in here. So while those backgrounds are a little crazy, let's go a little simple and let's just bring in a custom. Got a custom background here. Now what we can do is we can change this color to anything we want it to be. And what's really great, my favorite tool to use is this dropper tool. So if you're looking to get to sample this here, you could sample the colors in an image and customize your background color. Bring it over here to solids. So you got the gray, you could just drop in some gray and you can change the level of gray that you want it to be. Now there's another one that's over here, we got white. Now this is really cool because it gives you different types of white. You can get mint, ivory, a lot of different options there. All right, so we got the textures here now. Let's bring in fabric. There's a couple things you can do with this. You can check out different fabric, like if we want to do silk and if we want to change that color to be more of a pink. And let's change the amount, raise that. Let's bring in some gradient. So we got some control points on the screen here. You can move things around, or you can uh, change the levels here if you'd like. Then you can get in these colors. Let's bring the grunge. And again, it's just more, more texture. So you can find you know a background that you may be wanting. You can also tint it a different color, just to match the feel and, and, and the mood that you're going for with your background. Let's bring in some metal. Again, there's just different types of things that you can find. And, and if you find something you like, then you can even tint it a different color. And I like that color there, that's pretty cool. So beyond just choosing a color for your background, you can actually add texture to it. And that's what we're seeing in here. You can also do some stone, drag some stone in here and get some limestone going or some concrete. So for a moment, we're gonna go back to these uh, panels here. We got the custom. I'm gonna pick a color. All right, so we got a nice teal. Now we're going to spice this up a little bit. Let's go to the effects. We're gonna look for vignette, V-I-G-N. Let's drop that right on there. And already we can see just adds a nice subtle difference to that that really helps that color pop. All right, next we're gonna bring back the blobs. Let's take a look at this. We're gonna add an effect called halftone. Let's bring the opacity down and we're gonna add a shape mask. Let's make this a little bigger. We're gonna drag this off to the corner, bring that feathering out a bunch. We can put that wherever we want in any of these corners, drag the feathering based on the effect that we wanna do. Scale it down. I think it's interesting right in here. And again, lots of different adjustments you can make just to add a, a, a different feel to this. So we're gonna go back to this other example. We're gonna throw in another effect called Bokeh. 
Boca Random. And again, just something else that adds a little bit more movement to the background, which was once a still image, but we enhanced it with the vignette and we added some movement. If you're finding this helpful so far, just know we release new content all the time to help with your Final Cut Pro projects. Join our amazing family of subscribers. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to get notified when we release our next video. Now the other thing we can do is we can bring some stylized color presets in here. So let's check out some of these. And what's great about Final Cut is you just move your mouse. So you have your clip selected, move your mouse over the different presets and it'll show you what the default preset will do. Of course, once you put those presets on there, you can adjust them uh, to varying degrees. But you can find something that you may be looking for. So this kind of achieves that effect that we were looking at earlier. You can also choose to brighten it, moonlight, frost. That frost effect is pretty cool. And it auto you see that right there where those uh, values just moved, it automatically switch that for you. We could drag moonlight on there. And what this is doing is it is adding multiple color boards. If you wanted to get rid of any one of these, you just come in here and uncheck them. You can also press shift command X and that will remove all those attributes that you were just adding. All right, so we're gonna take a look at a few more clips. Let's go ahead and find, here we go, some comic looks. So this uh, car driving down the road, you can create some really cool effects here. Throwing any one of these on, I like that a lot. If you're just looking for an artistic look, just something that's a little bold and out there, you got these effects here that you can throw in there. So one trick you'll see a lot in movies and TV shows is when they're going in, into a flashback, they will choose a different color tone for the image. So if you're looking to do a similar effect, you can come over here and drag over memory. And what that does is it adds a color to this that you can adjust and increase. So the effect, this looks very modern. This looks like it took place in the 80s, the 70s. Just gives you like a, a feeling that this is from the past. And now a very modern effect, we can bring in teal and orange. And that just has a really fun cool effect that it can bring into the image. We could also take an image that was taken in the day and use this little preset here. Make it look like it is night. And if we are wanting to make traffic just look gloomier, <laughs> there's a whole bunch of stuff we can add to this to just make it completely awful and to convey that emotion of sadness, trapped feelings of Wondering when will this traffic ever end? All right, so we're gonna look at a really fun effect. We're gonna take a color in this image. In this case, we're gonna take red and we're gonna change that to a different color. So we're gonna bring up the color wheels here and specifically go to the hue and saturation curves. So let's bring that in and we're gonna use this dropper to find the red that we're wanting to change. Looks like it found that right there. And now, we can take this color value and change it to something that we want. So let's say we want to go purple. So if you want to change the hue and saturation, we can come over here, add some more color, less color, kind of get the feeling where we want it to be. I'm going to take that saturation down a little bit. You, also, you can also change the brightness. So if you want this to be a little brighter, again, you can just bring up the values in this Luma key here. You just bring up the values in the hue versus luma. And look, this clip has a totally different vibe than it did just a moment ago. Incredible! Now that you've learned how to change the background color in Final Cut Pro, I've made another video about how to draw lines in Final Cut Pro. Click here to check it out.